Say ah, stick your tongue out. Well, that's a very healthy looking tongue in oral cavity, I must say so myself. But imagine your tongue in oral cavity look like this. Wow, it looks like cottage cheese is stuck everywhere. You wondering what this is? Well, it's me, Candidiasis. I'm those wet patches present in your oral cavity. Although that's not the only form I present myself in. I'm a fungal infection caused by Candida albicans, and I'm the most common oral fungal infection. Although I'm already a part of your normal oral flora in 30 to 50 percent of the cases, and it may never cause an infection. But in a suitable environment, I tend to outgrow causing an infection. So what causes me to increase? Let's take a look at my risk factors. An imbalance of microflora increases the risk of infection. And what causes this imbalance? Well, it could be anything from antibiotic therapy to excessive use of mouthwash, steroids, etc. Continuous use of any one of these inhibits the growth of good bacteria or your natural oral flora in the oral cavity. So they are present to inhibit the growth of B, Candida albicans. But that's not all. Am I an opportunistic infection? I guess you could say that. I take opportunity of the diseased and the weak. I just thrive in these patients. I'm very commonly present in patients with immunosuppressive diseases, such as HIV, diabetes, and cancer. People undergoing immunosuppressive drugs, chemotherapy, and even patients with endocrine disorders. I also take advantage of the host's age. Yep, I even occur in babies, because their immune systems are not fully matured and are less stable to resist infection. But that's not all. I flourish in patients with xerostomia, smokers, and denture-wearing patients. I guess you could say I'm not a very nice guy. I thrive and take advantage of the weak and the young. <laughs> so how exactly do I work? Want to know how I attack these patients? Let's take a look at my pathogenesis. Well, in a suitable environment, I tend to adhere to the epithelium by secreting hydraulic enzymes, which break down the cell membrane, helping me gain entry into the epithelium. And what are these enzymes? Secreted aspartoproteases and phospholipases. Once I'm in the host's mucosa, I morph from yeast form to hypo form. It helps me adhere and penetrate the epithelium better. Well, that's it. My pathogenesis. I'm in the host. So how do I present myself? Well, I can present myself in many forms, depending on the environment and the host's health. Primary candidiasis occurs in the mouth and the throat, known as oral pharyngeal candidiasis, or thrush. Secondary candidiasis is when other systemic manifestations are involved. Primary oral candidiasis can further be seen in acute and chronic forms such as pseudomembranous, erythematous, or hyperplastic. You can also see Canada-associated lesions such as denture stomatitis, angular colitis, and medium rhomboid glossitis. The most classical form of infection is pseudomembranous candidiasis, or thrush. Let's take a look at my clinical features in thrush. It will be presence of curdy yellow-white plaques in the oral mucosa usually the buccal mucosa, tongue, and palate. These plaques consist of tangled masses of hyphae, yeast, and epithelial debris. They are also removable. The underlying mucosa may be normal or erythematous. Other symptoms include mild burning sensation and foul taste. Antibiotic therapy is the common cause of acute pseudomembranous thrush. People with immunosuppressive diseases, such as HIV or cancer, causes a longer-standing infection, which leads to chronic thrush. You know, I don't always appear as yellowish-white patches. 
Sometimes I give a reddened appearance to the dorsal tongue, posterior hard palate, and the buccal mucosa in erythematous candidiasis. I can cause a burning sensation of the mouth, which can sometimes be painful, and loss of the filiform papillae, causing a baldened appearance of the tongue. But why does this happen? Well, this usually follows after the use of broad spectrum antibiotic therapy. And hence, it's also called as acute atropic candidiasis or antibiotic sore mouth. And it's commonly seen in patients even suffering from xerostomia. One of my distinguishing features is that my white patches are removed by scraping. But if the patch is not removable, it's known as chronic hyperplastic candidiasis. It's the most least common form. Some say I'm a pre-existing leukoplakic lesion. Some say I cause the hyperkeratotic lesion. It's usually commonly seen in the anterior buccal mucosa, and it can be easily diagnosed by the presence of candidal hyphae, or it can be resolved with antifungal therapy. So those are my acute and chronic forms. But sometimes I can occur as lesions. When you notice a central papillary atrophy affecting the midline of the posterior dorsal tongue, it is known as medium rhomboidal glossitis. A rhomboid-shaped erythematous zone is seen, and the arrhythmia is due to the la loss of filiform papillae. The lesions are also present on the palate. When the tongue is in a resting position, the dorsal tongue lesion touches the palatal lesion, and this is known as the tissue lesion because of the close intimacy. When I involve the angles of the mouth, it's known as angular colitis. I mostly affect the elderly patients because they have reduced vertical dimensions. The saliva pools in these areas and attract yeast infections like me. But I don't always work alone here. 60% of the time, Staphylococcus aureus joins me for this infection. And as I said earlier, I also take advantage of denture-wearing patients. This infection is known as denture stomatitis, or chronic atrophic candidiasis. Here I cause various forms of arrhythmia in the denture-bearing areas. This usually happens with ill-fitting dentures or patients who don't follow the instructions properly and continuously wear their dentures and don't clean it properly. So these are the various forms I can present myself in in primary candidiasis. They're all restricted to the oropharyngeal areas. But sometimes I involve systemic manifestations or secondary candidiasis, which is also called as chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. In addition to candidal infections of the mouth, I infect other mucosal surfaces such as the skin and nails. This can be due to autoimmune disorders of the host and can cause endocrine disorders such as iron deficiency anemia, Addison's disease, and diabetes mellitus. So now that we know what I am and how I present myself, let's figure out how to diagnose me. Well, it's quite easy. You can figure out what I am by just clinical examination of the patient, or just take a good look at me under the microscope. Periodic acid shife or PAS method can be used. Cytological findings will show candidal hyphae and yeast cells present in the cell walls. In my histopath, you can see thickness of the perikeratin with elongation of the epithelial righty regis. Inflammatory infiltration will be present in the connective tissue, and candidal hyphae will be embedded in the perikeratin layer. So, how would you treat an infection such as myself? Well, I am a fungal infection, so the use of antifungal drugs could help. Antifungal drugs are subdivided into topical and systemic. Topical drugs include nystatin, amphotericin B, clotrimazole, and myconazole. The systemic drugs include 
ketoconazole, fluconazole, and etroconazole. Use any one of these drugs and I'll start screaming like the Wicked Witch of the West. I'm melting! I'm melting! Yeah. Anywho, this was the story of oral candidiasis. If you want to hear more stories like this, do subscribe to our YouTube channel.